All right. Today we're joined by Sama. Thanks for joining us today, Sama. Hi. Um, first questions are always easiest. What's your name and what's your company's name? <laughs> well, definitely the easiest. My name is Sama Ali, and I'm the founder of Sisterhood Media. And what does Sisterhood Media do? So we are a production and distribution organization focused on distributing and sharing content formed by marginalized creators and audiences. So we have our product, Sisterhood Media TV, where we stream you know, a bunch of short film series, episodics, um, in addition to all of the resources that we provide for our community. So we have a Skillshare series where we teach lessons, especially the business skills about being in the film industry. We have an Instagram live series called On the Couch where we interview various different film professionals about you know, the real ins and outs of their job. And then finally, we have our ongoing series, Movie Night, where we have a free movie screening in addition to a director conversation with on our platform bi-monthly. Well, that's a lot of great stuff. Um, how has, uh, you know, I know we, we chatted a, a while ago, uh, you're doing some live events. Um, has COVID, you know, impacted those? Obviously, they're not able to go forward. How's your business kind of pivoted? Yeah, COVID was um, definitely the push we needed to be fully online and I've been very happy about it. Um, before um, we all went into the lockdown, we were doing a traveling screening series called What If Media Look Like Us, where we went to different cities across Ontario and we would spotlight a short film program and talk with local artists and um, activators to have a really good discussion on the particular themes that we believed each short film was actually hitting. And we would always focus these screenings to be more regional. So we had an event in Scarborough and the content that we featured was more from the east side of Toronto. And we had an event in London and we our theme for there was bodies. And so we had really great discussions with local folks. And then obviously post lockdown, we've been doing everything online and movie night is one of the immediate results from it in terms of the same iteration a movie that's available online for free. But all of our programming, the Skillshare and the IG Live on the couch, it all pulls from that same idea of what if media looked like us. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, how's your, how long has your organization been around? We, I mean, technically speaking, this is wild. Um, as of next month, um, it's been in operation for four years in terms of it being public. We're now around three and a half years. So we came to be in November of 2016 and we went live in May of 2017. And then you launched sisterhoodmedia.tv at the beginning of the year, I think, was it? Yeah. So Sister Media TV came live in January. So we're within our first year of our product being available to folks. And it's been awesome. We've been growing at 30% month over month. And it's been really, you know, eye opening to see what we have been thinking about since day one come into fruition. And then, you know, keeping it up to date because content is king in our industry and having a streaming company is definitely a lot to carry month over month. And so we're always talking with short filmmakers. We're always talking about licenses. And it's just a, such a privilege to be the home where most of these films can live. That's great. And I mean, is it safe to say without sisterhoodmedia.tv, these films would have a hard time finding a place to live online? Yeah, I mean, they don't have a home in general. Short film distribution is really difficult to get into. Um, a lot of folks aren't even interested in distributing short films. And so our you know, priority is actually short films and it is the web series. And most of these filmmakers, they'll have premieres at festivals. However, after their festival premiere, it goes on a private link on Vimeo or YouTube. And if not a private link, it just, goes into the abyss of content that is available on the internet for free and nobody ends up watching it. And so with Sisterhood Media TV, we are bridging that gap where short filmmakers are actually receiving money for their films and going through the distribution process for the first time. And so we end up being a great learning experience for those creators as well. 
That's great. So like an education component built in. Yeah, there's definitely some sort of like educational aspect on it. And I think that has definitely impacted our legal paperwork because we have a lot of, you know, um, explainers <laughs> in our distribution package. And we're also very forgiving. And so where other distributors who are, you know, will focusing on television series and features, they may be focusing on every single element that they need, all the licenses, all the clearances. For us, we really just care about a few elements. Everything else is very forgiving. Awesome. Uh, kind of maybe leads into the, the next question. Um, you know, we talked about what your organization does, but why does your organization exist? What's the driving purpose or passion behind it? Mm -hmm. You may have already we answered this, but let's like, <laughs> Let's bring it home. I mean, we exist for the sole purpose of serving folks, serving audiences that are underserved in the greater Canadian media landscape. And all of our films focus on, you know, identity, whether it's a capital I identity film or a lowercase I identity film. And that extends to the episodics that we feature. And frankly, all the content that we usually co-sign. We work alongside with emerging our writers and filmmakers who are also trying to fund their work so that way we can make early acquisitions and know that in two years from now we're also going to be receiving this film from x filmmaker at this part of the country and so we're not like any other big streamer we don't have um, all the analytics we don't have all the data if anything we are specifically reaching out to our target let them know that we're there for them and we are receptive to what they like and what they want to see on our platform next. And so it's without them, we would really not exist. <laughs> Very cool. I love the, the purpose and the passion. Um, what's your background? How'd you get into this, uh, this line of work? Well, I have a background, a formal education in women's studies and feminist research. So a lot of, about sociology. And I am currently finishing my master's in film. And so it works hand in hand with each other. And I'm very interested in the industry elements compared to the production elements. Um, with that in mind, I was you know, really introduced into the film world um, when I was in high school in a youth program called TIFF Next Wave. And that was incredibly informative in teaching me about the what broad scope of what is actually available in this industry and something that exists outside of production, which is really hard to come by when all you see is movies and you think that's it. Um, and so that is really my background and how I ended up getting into this. And I'm such a believer of the power of media and what that actually does for folks and access points. And so this is why we are such you know, a haven for resources. We want people to know that they can come to us, ask questions and get answers. Awesome. Um, in one of your more recent uh, newsletter articles, uh, the, the headline prompted, don't tag us. Um, mm -hmm. I was curious, do you want to break down why you'd ask uh, group people not to, to tag you in your newsletter post? Yeah, I mean, this has been a very tumultuous year for everybody, and it's because there is a social reckoning, reckoning of all the systems that are in place that oppress folks. And it becomes very apparent in a health pandemic when we're all stuck inside and we can't look away. And so we found that, you know, we, we from the very beginning have always been for the people. And so our mission is rooted in feminism. And it was interesting come June that there was a, a complete search of folks who were tagging us on social media because of the protests that were happening in the name of George Floyd, in addition to countless other folks that have been slaughtered by the police year after year in every country. And while this is an international movement and you know a global move, um, the tagging was you know very apparent in June. And then throughout the course of the summer, it just went quiet. And all the tagging in June was explicitly to, you know, sell and boost different black owned products, um, black owned businesses, black owned organizations. And the whole purpose of this was for folks to actually, you know, come in and support. But I mean, money does not do anything for us in this life. Capitalism is a trap and being a business owner, <laughs> it's a constant state of just hypocrisy, but that's the way we have to live. And so, in September, there was a lot of verdicts coming out, um, one about Regis Paquette, um, one about Breonna Taylor, and it's just very apparent that 
all the tagging and all the black squares and all of the resource lists that folks were, you know, ready to shovel out cash and donate for is great, but what happens when that attention fades and things stay the same? And so with the verdicts that were coming out, we realized immediately that people were already starting to tag us. People immediately were thinking, I need to buy the next product from a black owned business. And you know, being a black woman, it's very apparent that two black women were killed at the hands of the police. And there's a verdict that is essentially saying, we're not gonna indict anyone. We're not gonna look into, any, into it any further. And people are looking for a black woman owned business to give their money to. And frankly, it's really disrespectful. That's not what's gonna change anything in this system. And so I asked folks to not tag us. Instead, I asked folks to meet each other on the table. And that is something that, you know, as a business owner, it's really values over dollar. Because at the end of the day, we can have as many members, as many subscribers to Sistered Media TV, but it's not going to change anything in our current system, in our current landscape. And what we're pushing for is you know, to build a coalition across lines, across cultural lines, across racial lines, um, for the media industry to evolve. And that can't happen when we live on those surges of caring about the next issue, about the next slaughter, and then go about the way everything is. So that's what the newsletter came from. And we received a lot of, you know, um, <laughs> you know, good no, go good notes about it. Everybody was, everybody was very very happy that they also had somebody who was thinking about the same thing. And I think it was important for it to be said. At the end of the day, yes, we're a business. And yes, like that's our, that's our business that we're in. We have to make money for us to survive. But I mean, going to the table is the utmost first step when it comes to evolving as a society. Thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, I do like to also ask uh, anything I should have asked but didn't um, about your business or about your background or mm -hmm. uh, you, you're obviously very passionate <laughs> about different social causes <laughs> out there. Uh, is there anything I should have asked you about but didn't? Um, that we are always obviously available um, online for a conversation. You can tag us at Sisterhood Media and we're always down to have a conversation. Um, we always accept films year round. We believe it's important to have an open door and there is a permanent submissions page on our website, sisterhoodmedia.net where mm -hmm. folks can always submit their film. And finally, um, supporting happens in multiple ways. Sisterhood Media TV is a membership um, based program you get your membership, you pay monthly or you pay annually. But there's also, you know, economic um, barriers that people in our community can't end up accessing this content that is really important for them. And so we have a support page on our website called the Accessible Streaming Program where folks can purchase a membership on behalf of another person. And we get folks all the time requesting for accessible memberships. And so by doing so, we can immediately pass it forward to a person who wants to be able to watch all the amazing, beautiful stories on Sisterhood Media TV, but cannot afford it. So I hope folks have learned something <laughs> from this and I hope you take time to learn a little bit more about Sisterhood Media. Awesome, so, you know, just so I understand the, the concept, I've seen the community cafes uh, where you can um, buy a copy for yourself, but then also buy uh, one for somebody else who comes into the exactly. theater. So that same idea. Oh, that's a great idea. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next comes the lightning round. So these are the, the quick, fast question. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. They also should be, should be easy, but sometimes they trip people up. So mm -hmm. first question is, uh, Mary single, what's your status? I'm single. And kids? No kids. Coke or Pepsi? Oh, that is, that's hard. <laughs> I'm gonna say Coke. I have to side with my family. Everyone's a Coke drinker. I think Pepsi tastes better, but Coke. All right. <laughs> Mars bars or Snickers? Mars. Not even a hesitation there. Favorite movie? <laughs> Favorite movie? Mm. Oh no. <laughs> Oh yeah, no! Not one um, distribute oh so that you're not into conflict. Oh my god! I've watched like over 500 films this year for all the work that I've done. Um, what is my favorite movie? Let's do a short. Let's do a short. Um, 
Oh my God, this is hard. This is definitely tripping me up. Um, I'm going to go with House by Joseph Amenta. It's a short film about um, these two queer boys in Toronto. It's on Sisterhood Media TV. 100% recommending all of y'all to check it out. It's such a good film. Awesome. Uh, favorite book? Oh my goodness. So right now I'm actually reading um, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It's, I am a, a notoriously slow reader. So Audible is by far the mm. most accessible thing to me and I'm loving it. And it is just exceptionally written. And the voice actor is, they're doing all these different types of voices. It is stunning. I love that book. It's really good. Have you gotten, maybe it would ruin the like uh, voice acting, but I, I like to listen to them on double speed. Have you gotten into it? So I know, I like to listen to it on like 1.3 speed. Um, I watch films at 1.8 speed. I feel like that's gonna make people itch, but in my industry, I watch a lot of films, so lot. it's 1.8 speed. <laughs> that's a productivity hack right there. Exactly. Uh, favorite game or video game? Well, right now I actually just started playing Animal Crossing. And so okay. I've just, my mental health is just like absolutely enjoying this. Like it is so good. Just I've heard hours, this. hours are just out of my day. It's beautiful. I've heard great things about it. Uh, I don't know a Nintendo system that can play it right now, but I definitely want to check it out. Uh, favorite vacation spot? Jamaica. Where, travel, Jamaica. Any mm -hmm. specific spot of Jamaica or just anywhere? Um, I've usually, so I, I went to Negril and I went to Montego Bay. Montego Bay is absolutely stunning. It's also in the city, so I love that. Um, that's definitely my favorite vacation spot. The best place that I've ever vacationed, like most beautiful is Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. It is 100% stunning. I went there when I was in East Africa. Um, my family lives there and Zanzibar is by far one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in this earth. I would recommend it to anyone. Yeah, I'm secretly scouting, using these questions to scout things to go <laughs> when we can actually travel. When, when we can be free. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time, but now, now I do. Um, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I've never seen Die Hard. <laughs> I actually, there's a lot of like classic like yeah. films that I have never seen. Like 2001 A Space Odyssey, I have never seen it. I just saw The Matrix last year. Oh, wow. Like, I'm working through them. Mm -hmm. but I mean it's it's okay it's not a <laughs> don't um it's a shame they never made sequels for the matrix so I'll just leave that there they made them but they're not good um <laughs> you're, ban you're banished to an island and can take only f one thing with you what do you take my mother oh there's a it's not a person it's a thing oh I have to do a thing like an object mm -hmm. it can't be living no um that's a great question i feel like i'm i'm on animal crossing and i'm learning all about survival skills like this should be like really important. i don't know um a manual like a for like book of tools like okay. i think that's what i've learned from animal crossing you, yeah. you need like a book of tool like how to make all these tools once you learn how to do that you can do anything all right i like that I, weirdly enough, I'm sure it exists, the backpacker's survival guide to... Exactly. Something like that. Like, basics that you need when you're abandoned, that book. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all my questions for today. Thanks so much, Sama, for joining us on Remember Monday, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you.